evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we come about that special time of the Sunday where I should be recording Salty Sunday and I should be doing something Salty Sunday. But I don't want to mention that right now because we're going to be doing the Cali Effect answers your question. That's right. You guys have the opportunity to ask me any question and I answer it in a video. If you guys want to ask me a question, please, 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 this is the most important thing. List it down below on this video only or message me with obviously in quotations this is to go for the cali effects video or even when i ask i normally ask the night after or sometimes even two nights after go ahead and list them down on that that is the only way it will be on this video because it's just so hard to go back and find all of this stuff um my first question is what deck wins ycs dallas um obviously he's asking me for my what do i think not what deck would genuinely win because I don't have an Oracle or just sitting by. If I did, um, I would be picking out the Super Bowl winner right now and saying that I'm a fan of them and then putting all my money on them. But um, what deck wins YCS Dallas? That is a very good question. Um, you have three really strong decks in Burning Abyss, um, Shadows, and Talonites are falling a little off the map, but they're still really good. There's nothing that has came out that I can think of, nothing new. So, um, man, I, I think... It's not necessarily... Wait, YCS Dallas is on the first. Okay, that changes just a little bit. Um, maybe Satella Knight. Just because Satella Knight is the only deck that actually receives support um, coming into the next list. But, I mean, it, it really could be Burning Abyss or Shadows or even some Rogue deck coming out of nowhere. Because this list is so diverse. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and be, and be out there and say that Six Samurais win YCS Dallas. They're an extremely big sleeper. Special Summoning Sheen or Notoria Beast on your opponent's turn with in back row. It's pretty scary. And the fact that they have their six searchers. They have three reinforcement of the army and three Sheen smoke signal. I'm going to go ahead and say Six Samurai wins YCS Dallas just to be bold. Um, the next question is, what are you... Why are you planning on taking off ads? Well, if you guys have noticed in my Prophecy deck profile, ads have been officially taken off. Um, I really want to go into a different direction with the Kali effect, and I don't want ads on my channel. Um, yes, I am taking a loss. Uh, I'm not making any money anymore off of YouTube. But I, I feel that the quality of the channel is... is is the best thing i don't do this for money and I, I really wanted to put that out there to my new subscribers and my old subscribers alike i don't youtube for money i don't yugi tube for money in any way shape or form um i would like for you guys to buy my stuff if you want to support me but other than that i don't make videos for uh money i make it for you guys specifically um the next question is do you think global will have any major uses this format well i really like global i do uh it's actually one of my favorite if not my favorite tuner, actually Gale's my favorite tuner, which did come off the list as well. Um, I really like Global, but I think it's a really good card. Will it have any major uses? Only time will tell. Formula Synchron is at three, so uh, Quasar is getting a reprint. I mean, those are two alarming things. Sylvan's just got a huge boost from that. Maybe they should go in a different direction as opposed to uh, making all these X seeds and big monsters. Maybe they should focus more on the plant build or maybe go into a Quasar. It'll be definitely interesting. That's another deck that I am definitely considering doing on a Saga again because I haven't done Sylvan's in so long. And, you know, they have so much more support. I can do a lot of things for it. Gage Pollock actually sent me his deck list, and it's it's extremely nice. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around with Sylvan just a little bit before I decide to go on to a saga or not. Um, the next question is can Fire Fist with Wolf Bark at three outmatch Altair Deneb combo or is Satella Knight's king of the rank four plays? That is a really, really good question. You guys have to remember this one thing and one thing only. Deneb only searches Altair. All right, Fire Fist, um, not only can they make rank three plays through Wolf Park, they can make Synchro six and rank, or um, they can make Synchro six and rank three plays. They can make Synchro eight plays and rank four plays. So you necessarily don't want to compare Satella Knight to plus one Fire Fist. Compare Fire Fist as a total deck with the three Wolf Park, with the Roosters, um, with the Fire Fist Spirit. They on theory on paper they completely outmatch the telenite in every phase of the game because they can make monsters like crimson blader to handle shadows because they can they can make dweller as easy as the telenite and they can do so many things i mean i, I really feel that on paper firefist completely outmatched the telenite and making every single play
play because they have a wide array of monsters from Crimson Blader all the way down to Ghost Trick Alucard, something that Deneb doesn't, or Altair deck doesn't have. If they get Stingy and Dirge, then they're done. The Fire Fist deck, they get Stingy and Dirge, it, it's, it hurts, but they still have outside plays outside of just making fours. They still have bears. They still have gorillas to get rid of the opponent's opposition and Stingy and Dirge itself. They still have so many other aspects, so you really can't compare them as far as making rank four, days, uh, rank four plays because the correct way to play Fire Fist is to play Fire Fist, not to just play Wolf Bark and Bear. Give me one second. You're not going to notice it. All right, second is up. Let me make sure everything's Gucci. All right, everything's good. Second is up. I have to put my phone on the, or my laptop on the charger. Um, and that's what I really feel about uh, the Fire Fist matchup versus uh, the Satella Knights. Um, do you still believe in Yang Zing Master Race? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. I like the deck kind of, but. I don't necessarily feel they they just might not be my play style i was hyped about them i jumped on the i jumped on the train even though no one else was on the cargo ship or anybody i mean i really think it was just me and then i pulled eric and then i was like yeah we're gonna play yang zing yang zing master is too strong and i play really well with them and i think they play really well but um i i don't i'm starting to debate if they're my style of deck so i mean once i figure out if they're my style of deck i mean that really ultimately decides if i still believe in yang zing master race and when i mean my style of deck i mean that there's a plethora of decks i can play protecting. i mean for example just i have two full binders of decks that well i know they're not finished so i just have like a whole bunch of stuff everywhere ghost trick is not a deck it's an engine i just want to let you guys know there's like two full binders of decks that i can play um effectively i don't know if you guys can see it let me check oh well, sure i'm just gonna say you guys can hear it that's actually an engine as well um there's two binders full of decks that i necessarily felt were pretty you know they were solid and i really liked how they played and then i have a couple deck boxes full of decks that i play um so i have a huge array i don't get rid of any of my stuff uh that i personally like to play and it, it that's what really comes into play is i like hey i want to play black wings today i'll just get my black wings stuff out of my binder i have yellow swag high rarity black wings and i'm ready to play so once if i figure out that yang zing deserves to be in one of these binders which actually it is right now but if it deserves to stay in that binder um then i will keep it in the binder one day i will come back to it and play it but as far as right now it's just, not really uh do you still enjoy youtubing and plan on continuing long into the future well first and foremost i want to say anything can happen i mean i can die right now and the cali effect will cease to exist there's nothing after that to keep the cali effect going um so as far as continuing in a long future uh, anything can happen um i can eventually just quit Yu-Gi-Oh, which is something that i've strongly considered in the past couple of weeks uh, there's no local shops anymore in my area so i mean that's that's pretty rough um and I, do I still enjoy you YouTubing? Of course. I don't know why you would think anything different. I mean, anytime you see me upload a video, it's, I mean, you guys have to think that I put up as much effort as I do. I still do the exact same content. A lot of people have been changing, talking about how the Cali effect is changing. Well, no shit. Um, in order for the channel to get better, it has to change. Now, if it changes for the worse, then it changes for the worse in your opinion. But I'm not going to say that every change has been for the better. Like, for example, certain series I want to get off the ground. Like, I want to make that Pokemon channel. I want to make, actually, another channel where it's just me vlogging. I want to get Battle of the Gods, something that you guys probably don't even remember, um, to back in. I want to continue to do real-life games and stuff. But it's extremely hard when you don't have the necessary tools or where so many things pop up. That's what, that's what I want you guys to understand, is that it becomes extremely hard with that and then school and then you know i do have a kid i do have a wife i do have a life i do have football that i love so um i really appreciate you guys the people that have just been patient i really appreciate you guys for being patient with me and you guys know that the cali effect will pull through i'll figure out something and we'll continue on but those thoughts are still in the back of my head they're still sitting there and they will come into fruition i think somebody um Somebody asks, like, what happened to your Pokemon channel idea? And I was like, um, I, I, shit, is, they won't even, I can't even record the Pokemon game for right now. But um, even Nike, even Nike, they tried so many things 
um, the NFL. It's so many great companies that have tried so many things and failed miserably. But you know what they do? They get back up and they try it again and they try it again until it comes right, until it becomes right. Um, and that's really how successful things work. You keep trying until it is right. And that's what I plan on doing. Um, is the next set worth buying? The next set coming out worth buying? The biggest question is, are you a vendor or are you a player? As a vendor, the next set is worth buying when the set comes out. That's it. Um, Primal Origin is not worth buying right now. Primal Origin is the last set. Yeah, Primal Origin is the last set. The last set is not worth buying anymore. I mean, as from a vendor standpoint. Even from a player standpoint, I'd probably rather just buy singles. So, is a set ever worth buying? More than likely not. But, um... It depends on if you're just like a collector. If you're a collector or you just like buying cards, then yes. But if you're looking for specific cards in a set, then sets are never worth buying. Uh, do you believe it will have a lot of money cards to pull? I mean, every single set at the beginning has a lot of money cards to pull or a lot of sleeper cards that aren't worth that much. It's up to you to decide which cards are they. Uh, where is Salty Sunday? It'll be here next Monday. Why is Eric so gay? Well... I think Eric is gay. I, I mean, you, you're born being gay, so it's... Uh, I think that's why he's gay, but I, I don't really know what else other than that. That was a very random question. On a scale of 1 through 10, how broken do you think Yu-Gi-Oh! is about to get? I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is actually getting more balanced as opposed to broken. Broken is when we have a Dragon Ruler format where the only deck that can win is Dragon Rulers, genuinely. Spellbooks can compete, but would win Dragon Rulers. Um, that's broken. Now, we fast forward into a format where I can say three decks, three to four decks, and all of them have a possibility of winning YCS Dallas. And then on top of that, I can turn around and say, oh, well, the list just helped out this deck. So this deck can win also. I think that it's getting a lot more balanced than before, um, especially with bad cards like Rageki coming off the list. Shh, I didn't say that. Um, do you think Burning Abyss would do much if Astro Force were out of the equation? That's a really good question. I mean, but then that's like asking me, do you think I would have won the lottery if uh, I would have picked the right numbers at the right or at a different time? Yeah, and then no. Um, Astro Force is one of those cards that I feel really did help Burning Abyss. But if Astro Force didn't exist, I mean, in theory, a card would have to replace Astro Force which would probably help Burning Abyss. But let's say the card did not help Burning Abyss. They still have Caius. They still have... They could just go Burning Abyss Monarchs, which I feel is... it's It has a lot of great synergy with each other. Um, and they can use the rank 3 monsters to blow up the opponent's opponent stuff, like with Alucard, um, Engineer to protect their stuff. Oh, uh, excuse me. And they can still do so many other things. Um, I don't feel that Astro Force is the reason why burning abyss are so good because they do have a lot of other options but astro force is a really good card in burning abyss in my opinion um I, i've heard a couple of me and my actually me and a couple of other players were debating over astro force um if it's genuinely a good card for burning abyss and my answer is yes because outside of monarchs or whatever you do play as attacking your burning abyss you have no outs to monsters stronger than you and uh tiris and freaking um tiris uh, what else do you play? Uh, obviously, Plyties. Terrace, Plyties, Volcasaurus, they're really good cards. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of it's kind of good. Do you think Artifacts should have gotten hit in some way, primarily Sanctum, considering so many decks run Artifacts? No, I do not believe that Artifacts should have gotten hit. Artifacts are a deck that are right now flying under the radar. Prime example, have you ever seen an Artifact-based deck win? No. Second example, where the hell is Hat? Where did Hat go? Artifacts don't make the deck. The deck makes itself and artifacts are splashed into it. As opposed to cards on the list or cards that have been banned, um, the deck was really good, but if I splash this in there, it'd make it so much better and it would make it without the deck. And without that deck or without that card, the deck isn't really good. Prime example, Shadows have a couple of variants. You have Shadow Light Swarm, you have uh, you have Hat Shadow, or not Hat Shadow, Artifact Shadow. You have a couple of decent Shadow decks that can all top. 
Now, if the artifacts were hitting themselves, would it hurt you at all? No, not really. They just go to another variant. And are the artifacts genuinely the problem? No, not anymore. Because there's, there's, like I said, interaction on your opponent's turn. Kenobi is starting to address that. And it's starting to become less and less and less good. And that's what I feel about artifacts. That they're not really... Um, they're good, don't get me wrong. They're not as game-changing as they were when they first came out when Hat was running around. Do you think the Yu-Gi-Oh! Do you watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime? I'm sorry. And if so, which one is your favorite? Which one is your least favorite? Yes, I do watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Um, my favorite is obviously the first season. Um, I'm going to put that one to the side because for that nostalgic feeling, I think that will always be my favorite one. Um, it would be a tie between Yu-Gi-Oh! Zero, the Zero season, and 5Ds. I love 5Ds. I don't know why. Because once I... Actually, I do know why. Once you ignore that they're on fucking motorcycles and all that stupid shit, it's a really entertaining series. Uh, my least favorite series, I can't... I can't say Zexo or Zeo or however you say it. Because I didn't... Okay, I watched Zexo, but I didn't watch Zexo. Like, I really didn't give it time of day. Like, I saw it and I was like... Oh, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. Um, my least favorite would then be defaultedly GX because I have not watched a new one. If it is out in America yet, I don't know. GX is horrible. I'm Everybody keeps telling me, oh, GX, you get to the middle and it's good. Why the hell would I waste half of my time to get to the middle for it to be good? If a movie is bad in the beginning, will you watch it to the end? I mean, that genuinely depends on the type of person you are. But if a movie is genuinely bad from the beginning and I have to wait for the middle to be good, I'm not going to waste my time at the beginning. Now, a lot of people can argue, oh, you could just watch the middle. But then what's the point of watching the movie? If I don't watch it from the beginning, then what's the point of watching it to the end? So it's like GX is really, really bad. I've tried my best to get into GX and I just can't. I've tried to give it... You know, hey, let's watch GX. Let's see if they have anything. Let's sit down and force myself to watch it. I think I watch a good 10 to 15 episodes, which is me basically watch. I feel is me personally watching half of the fucking movie because if anything over anything over four episodes, if you're still committing to that show, you better like it. So, um, and I couldn't, I just couldn't get into it. It was just so hard. So GX was the worst anime a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh anime in my opinion ever i know a lot of people that just completely love gx and it and you really have to say for some people it's for that nostalgic feeling some people actually started playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the gx era so that's why i can't consider my first time watching Yu-Gi-Oh, which is the original one and then their first time watching Yu-Gi-Oh, which is gx and then the people that actually like gx which i think like five people in the world but other than that yeah G gx is probably my least favorite um what is the best blue eyes white dragon and what is your favorite i don't oh what is the best eyes dragon i'm sorry um the best eyes dragon which i guess is red eyes blue eyes odd eyes um, oh i don't know any other eyes dragons so i don't want to say one and then like damn it there was an eyes so i'm just gonna say out of blue eyes red eyes and odd eyes i like odd eyes but i'm gonna have to out of those three i'm gonna have to give it the blue eyes um and my favorite blue eyes is this blue eyes right here um the art just looks so cool and I, I just like it it's just a really good one but out of those three eyes dragons because i can't think of any other blue eyes would have to be my favorite 3000 beater um he actually makes a mystic piper deck that i like really well i play with it for fun and it's just a really fun deck um which of all formats do you like love to play again and if there was a chance to play them again okay i understand what you're saying um Synchro Cat format was the last format that I genuinely played competitively. I played Synchro Cat. Oh, and then Chaos Plant format. I played Gladiator Beast. I don't know why anybody did not choose to play Gladiator Beast in that format. It was so many easy wins against Chaos Plant. Um, my favorite format henceforward outside of playing competitively. Uh, the last couple of formats have been really good. I I've liked them. I can play just about anything that I've wanted to and got away with it. Um, I really like that. Uh, but Synchro Cap format, Go Control format was pretty fun. Um, but everybody likes Go Control format. But I mean, that's that's beside the point. Uh, I really have to say Synchro Cap format where Gladiator Bees, Blackwing, Synchro Cat, Heroes were good. 
um, if you decided to play them. Like, all of those decks are pretty good. Those are only, that's really the only format that I like, that Chaos Plant, the Synchro Cat format. I hate it, Teledad format. It was the most, it was the dumbest fucking format ever. Um, Dragon Ruler format. I mean, if you play Dragon Rulers, you play Spellbooks, it was an amazing format. Um... I know there's a couple other formats. I just can't think of them on the top of my head. But those formats were pretty nice. I like formats where there can be diversity. And if there isn't diversity, there can be a lot of skill in it. For example, the Dragon Ruler Mirror Match is not just summon all your Dragon Rulers and I lock you out first. The Dragon Ruler Mirror Match takes a lot of skill. Um, the Sparrowbook Mirror Match is a Mirror Match. is the reason why I would never play Spellbooks in the Spellbook format. Because they go, oh, standby phase, J-Day. And you're like, well, fuck, I can't play Spellbooks without making him plus. So that's why I would never play. I think playing Spellbook in, in that format is just suicide. Not because of your Dragon Ruler Match, just because of your Spellbook Mirror. It's, it's very bad. That and Wisdom is like a card in there. So um, I like that format. I really have to give it to that Synchro Cat format. The Synchro Cat Chaos Plant format, that format was amazing. Uh, I think that was probably the best format, in my opinion, that I can think of right now. There's a couple of other great formats, like I said. Um, what's your favorite card from all the current cards? Arclor Christia. I didn't want to be sarcastic, and I didn't know if you caught on by now, but Arclor Christia. Um, the crazy thing about Arclor Christia is that I found out that later on, Arclor Christia is a, is a symbol of Jesus Christ, so, uh, it's kind of weird, and yes, it's a guy, I know, a lot of people, I thought it was a girl too, but it's, he's, uh, he is supposed to be Jesus Christ, so, that's a very odd thing for me not being religious, but, uh, still always drawn back to that Jesus thing, um, that's my favorite card. Do you personally buy any amount of bulk cards from people? I still buy. Yes, I, I still buy cards. I mean, I know I haven't put that out there. I still buy and I still do sell. I think that my prices cannot be beat when selling and in buying as well. Um, I Actually, I know there's a couple of people that I probably would buy at my price, but I mean, they don't buy as much as me. So I'll buy I'll buy everybody's stuff if they give it to me. Um, the only thing I ask is for it to be in mint condition or a really good condition. And I'll buy it. I'd still do buy and sell. So um, expect a video to be coming up soon. I think that's all of the questions I have now. Is that? Yeah. And I know that was a pretty long video. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Um, once again, I really do appreciate everybody that subs to my channel. Everybody that watches my channel. And in the Cali Effect, you are correct. The Cali Effect is changing. And I hope you guys enjoy the changes that are to come. Um, I want to get more precise. Um, I'm starting to figure that maybe less videos are a better thing i'll let you guys to comment that on below is less videos the actually better thing or what you guys would feel would be better um i still want to do sagas um i still want to do those wacky decks i still want to do a lot of things to help you guys better yourself as a player but as you guys have noticed i dropped from three videos a day to two videos a day to kind of like one video a day kind of sort of maybe every other day and i want to know what did you guys think is the best i already know what eric is going to say um and i've started to see that my subscriber account and my viewage count on those specific videos have went up because of it but that can be a trick statistic because if i upload every day i get at least i want to say two three hundred views a day whereas if i know if i upload once a week i'd get 800 to a thousand plus views on that video but if you guys think about it if i upload every day i'm getting a thousand plus views throughout that week anyway so like i said it's a trick statistic but ultimately i want to know what do you guys want um for the future of the channel what would you guys want to see and all that other stuff i really appreciate you guys for watching thank you please like comment subscribe emphasis on like comment and subscribe but most of all everybody enjoy is that